Hey guys, and welcome back to Not Financial Advice, where I talk about all things DeFi and crypto related. So if you're new here, please like and subscribe and help the algorithm pick up this video. So the NFT market has gone parabolic, especially this year. Um, you just take a look at any number of the headlines that have come out. With everything happening in the NFT space just popping off, I wanted to make this video as an intro on how to get started with NFTs, what they are, their use cases, what drives their value, how to find them, different tools and strategies, as well as the potential downsides. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's start off with what is an NFT? So an NFT stands for a non-fungible token, fungible meaning interchangeable, and it's basically a store of unit on a ledger such as a blockchain where each token is unique and non-interchangeable. So it's not apples to apples, it's like apples to oranges to bananas to grapefruits, watermelons, everything. That's sort of the idea. And NFTs can be used to represent things like photos, videos, audio, and other types of uh, digital assets. Um, and obviously we've seen this commonly used in the art world right now for very expensive JPEGs. While anyone can right-click and save a JPEG, they, it doesn't mean that they own the NFT. It's not the same thing. An NFT is more than just the JPEG, and it's proof of ownership as recorded by the immutable ledger called a blockchain. So even if you were to right-click and save a JPEG, you wouldn't have the benefits of owning this NFT, such as maybe uh, membership access to certain events uh, as used in ticketing. You wouldn't be eligible for any type of airdrops where the creators of the project may take a snapshot of all the wallets that contain their NFTs in a certain time frame. Um, you also wouldn't be able to do things like breeding or unlocking other assets because sometimes such as Axie Infinity, um, if you have Axies, the actual Axie, then you can um, use them to breed with each other and perhaps generate more rare and desirable uh, traits. So aside from being expensive JPEGs, let's talk a little bit about the use cases for NFTs. Um, one of the most obvious examples is the art space where now you can have verifiable authenticity and proof of ownership which before has caused some considerable and expensive problems for the fine art world. NFTs in its own right is sort of a collector's item in the sense that you have artificial scarcity, you have the flex factor, and you have the ability to own a time capsule in a sense because money can't buy time, but a time capsule would be the next closest thing, right? Owning the first of something, whether it's the first NFT being auctioned by Christie's or the first NFT um, collection that's ever been dropped on a certain blockchain or a certain platform. There's always been that collector mania about it um, before NFTs even existed and that definitely comes into play with NFTs as well. Not to mention behind every valuable NFT or collection is a story, it's a unique story. Um, whether it's something, for example, with Beeple's 69 million dollar NFT piece, um, you know, he's not just some ordinary Joe Schmo that just minted up this expensive JPEG and they auctioned up Christie's. Um, for one, he's already been a established artist in the space, so he's already got the reputation, which is very, very important in the art world as well as the NFT world. But his story was one that he basically created a new art piece every single day for I think it was like 13 plus years and people want to become a part of that story, if not to own it. Another good use case would be having um, royalties come from the secondary market. So on platforms such as OpenSea or Rarible, you can set a percentage of each subsequent sale that you will collect. So if I set 10%, for example, that means I get 10% of every single subsequent sale of my art piece. No middleman except for the, the percentage that you pay to the platform, whether that's OpenSea or Rarible. It's trustless, it's verifiable, it's sort of like a direct deposit in a sense. You know, this isn't even considering what this technology can do for the entertainment business. Um, with music and movies, you know, in the music industry, 
record labels are notorious for taking the lion's share of the revenue for um, an artist's creation. Where I think the latest article said that artists usually get about anywhere from 12 to 20 percent of revenue for their work with record labels and A&R and everybody else getting the majority share. As NFTs become more sophisticated and they evolve, I think you're going to see a lot of disruption with the music industry in terms of revenue distribution, copyrights, um, royalties. Okay, great. So now where can you find NFTs to buy and sell? Well, anyone can mint an NFT. I could do it, you could do it, um, and we can pretty much list them on a couple of places. One of the more popular ones is OpenSea. Pretty much anyone can mint an NFT and sell it, and they have a ton of different NFTs for you to buy as well. There are other ones too, such as Rarible, Super Rare, Foundation App, Artblocks, um, each having their own niche and some of them more exclusive than the other. Sometimes you need to be invited to go on some of these. Sometimes they're celebrity endorsed, etc., etc. So the best strategy for getting a really great NFT is obviously find them before they blow up. And this is usually done one of few ways, either by using the right tools or being in the right circles and Discord groups. You really want to be able to get in the pre-sale market, which is essentially minting it yourself or winning um, a giveaway, some sort of airdrop contest, basically avoiding buying it on the secondary market. Um, and there are a few different tools and places to use. The first one is going to be rarity.tools. This one I really like because it shows you all the different collections. They're really good about listing the newest ones that have just been added. They also tell you the top collections. So 7 day volume, total, average price, owner content. In 3 out of 4 categories is CryptoPunk and the Board Apes Yacht Club. Most of us are going to be priced out of these, so we're looking for the next CryptoPunks or the next Board Ape Yacht Club. What I like to do is go to Upcoming. And this is going to show you the calendar of upcoming projects. And a good way to kind of check them out is, you know, for example, there is the Soccer Doge Club, the Pixel Kitty Supercar Club. As a cat lady myself, obligatory Twitter check. Um, okay, so nice. They have, I'm going to follow them, they have almost 10,000 followers, which is pretty good considering that. They're gonna have a limited 10,000 pieces total with a mint price of 0 0.03 ETH. Um, another thing you wanna definitely check out is go to their website and read through it. read on what they're building, is it going to have utility, is there a universe built around it, or is it just going to be a set of pixels. You also want to see if you can find out who the creators are, because creators are going to have reputation more than likely, and that's going to play a huge factor in the value of these NFTs in the long term. And ideally, they would have a Discord right here, which is perfect. You want to check out their Discord as well and see how many members there are already, and what the vibe is, you know, is it a good community? Um, so right now there's only 62 members, which is kind of weird for a Twitter account that has over 9,000. So might want to do a little bit more digging. They're doing giveaways right now. Um, I'm in a lot of discords and that's another great strategy that you want to implement is get really good at reading through a lot of Discord groups and servers pretty quickly because there are so many golden nuggets in these Discord channels. Um, a lot of people will discuss trades, discuss upcoming projects. Um, it, it's really going to be word of mouth driven. And if you're more into the gaming side of things, there's a website called playtoearn.net and here you can definitely check out all of the pre-sale NFTs. Um, and kind of check you know their social metrics and get some more data do some more DD see which ones you think have really great potential there's another one that's similar to and this one's called play to earn dot online and here you can check more of kind of the news the latest news on 
which projects are getting funding because having cash is always a great advantage. Um, so I would also look through here just to see what's going on in the space, kind of just staying updated with everything. You can also check out cryptoslam.io. This will list things that is not on OpenSea, um, for example, the NBA hotshots. And this is going to kind of sacrifice depth for width, so you're going to see a lot of info, um, but obviously not as much information for each thing. And you're going to be able to see by days, all time, um, search all these different NFTs. I would recommend just going through a couple of these because a lot of this NFT um, space is very community driven. There's not really like an established media outlet for NFTs. You have to really be following the right people and joining the right circles, the right crowd. I mean, you've heard this all before. And another good place to check on the stats of all NFTs in the market is OpenSea.io. Where you go is you go to stats and rankings, and this is where you'll be able to find the top movers. You've already got your established top three, but for example, Parallel Alpha has really been popping off and I actually found out about this project just a few days before they launched through word of mouth. Um, I don't remember, I think it was either like Twitter or Discord. And another project that's really good to look out for is Art Blocks Curated. They've really, really popped off. Um, especially a few of their curated pieces like the Fidenzas have been going insane. You can go to Art Blocks and you can check under Curated Projects. The Chromie Squiggle by Snowfro, uh, once again, artist with reputation, with track in the community, and a story behind it. This platform is very niche in doing generative art, and um, these pieces are usually done through AI. Their most popular ones are going to be the curated projects. You may be able to find some gems in the playground and the factory, but if you look on the secondary market, you'll see that the Squiggle, um, Crypto Blot, Singularity, Fidenzas, um, Watercolor Dreams, or just Dreams by Joshua Bagley. You can also track celebrity wallets to see what they get before blows up, like for example, Mike Tyson just picked up a cool cast NFT. So those are sort of some of the um, main strategies for finding great projects before they blow up. So PSA, if you've been priced out of Bored Apes, Yacht Club, and the CryptoPunks, your second chance on the rocket is going to be uh, Cool Cats, for sure. So Cool Cats I actually found, um, probably because I'm a huge cat person, I'm probably going to, I'm destined to be a cat lady. and. They have 9,999 total cool cats, floor price of one ETH. They've been around for about a couple of months now. Um, and I just really love the art. At the end of the day, you want to buy something that you actually like. Um, because there's no guarantee that you're going to get a certain level purchase price. They have a really great community. If you check out the Discord, uh, really wholesome community actually and they're just really cute they're adorable they're different you know and that stands out they're not trying to just like copy crypto punks or board apes um, they're even different from crypto kitties you know so you definitely want something that stands out that's doing their own thing and the other important part is that they have a good team check out their Twitter they have almost 15,000 followers which is great as well and Mike Tyson has a cool cat which definitely helps the cause. Um, another great project that I found via word of mouth is Parallel Alpha. It's a sci-fi collectible card game with NFTs. Um, the cool thing about this is that they're really building a whole metaverse for this game. So the game is still in development. Um, they've done these card drops where you had to reserve them in pre-sale before release. And now a lot of them are on the secondary market. And if you'll look, it's kind of insane what some of these have gone for already. So within 24 hours, this project actually momentarily overtook Board Apes Yacht Club. Um, and I think it was in terms of volume traded. You can actually sort by highest last sale. Obviously, some cards are going to be more valuable than others. And everyone is going to need a deck 
to be able to play the game once it's released. Um, and what's really interesting is that these masterpiece cards, which are going for quite a bit, uh, last sold for high 75 ETH, they actually give you a percentage of all the cards traded that look like the photo you're holding. So for example, if I were to hold this parallel masterpiece card, I would be getting 1% of the revenue from all cards that have this photo forever, which is insane. It's, it's basically passive income. So you can kind of see why these are being priced the way that they are. They're beautiful, you know, uh, the designers came from backgrounds like Activision and Blizzard. So it's really high quality work, not to mention they have a great community, almost 16,000 on Twitter, and they're going to be integrating real life um, collectible cards plus AR, which is augmented reality. Um, right now, the NFT SE editions are very undervalued, in my opinion, uh, especially in the secondary market. And obviously, the more rare, the more valuable, although right now, I think the market is kind of sorting itself out because anything that's a one of 500 or one of 800 should be worth more ultimately than something that's like one out of 10,000. It's basically play -fi. You know, you've got games plus NFTs plus DeFi and there's just a lot in development. It's a very active community, a, lot, a very active team and a lot of functionality and utility with it, which is also really important. I hope that's helped you get a better understanding of kind of where to start, what to look for, strategies, tools, as well as potential gems. So yeah, that's the beginner's guide crash course into NFTs. Tell me what some of your favorite NFTs are and why. If you found any of this useful, please like this video and subscribe. That really helps with the algorithm. See you in the comment section below and I will see you next time.